They say you can tell a lot about a person by who their friends are, and that holds true for Eugene Levy and director Ivan Reitman. The two met at McMaster University before they were famous and before they went on to make the world a funnier place. Ivan Reitman died on the weekend at age 75. And Eugene Levy, I'm honored to say, joins me now to talk about their friendship and his remarkable legacy. First, Eugene, I know how much Ivan meant to you, and we are so saddened by this unexpected loss. You've really known him for a lifetime, so how do you sum up such a, such a big life and, and a huge friendship? Well, um, you know, it was unexpected, and it really was a shock. I, you know, I think I probably represent the early years uh, for Ivan. Um, uh, you know, we were there at the very beginning, as you said, you know, you know, met at McMaster. And he went on to literally change the face of comedy in Hollywood um, when he started, uh, you know, with uh, National Lampoon's uh, Animal House. Um, and, you know, just had, uh, uh, listen, Ivan, for even when we were at McMaster University, just had kind of a golden touch. Mm -hmm. He had, um, he, we all knew he was destined to be a great producer and director. He was destined for great things. We knew that in school. From, from the hammer to Hollywood. But it is incredible that you met at McMaster, and it wasn't just the two of you. So can you name off some of the classmates in that hotbed of comedy that is Hamilton, Ontario? Well, McMaster was... It was just fun back then in the early 70s. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, in the uh, late 60s. <laughs> um, uh, Ivan, uh, uh, the, Ivan, myself, Dan Goldberg... Uh, Marty Short, Dave Thomas, Doug Henning, uh, Lawrence Martin, uh, one of one of Canada's great journalists and authors. Um, it was it was so much fun, and Ivan introduced me to film at McMaster. I had um, I had heard I, that rumor actually that uh, you know first I guess you were in his first movie was it Cannibal Girls and. Was is it true that he was actually putting you in as coffee boy before he decided to cast you? Well, my first job, Ivan gave me my first job in in this business, which was coffee boy, not acting the role <laughs> of coffee boy, the actual coffee boy on his first feature, shot in Toronto in 1970, and because he knew how much theater I was doing, and because he kind of thought I was a relatively funny lad at McMaster in his second movie, which was Cannibal Girls, he said, why don't you be the lead in this? And I was playing opposite Andrea Martin. And that was my first acting role on film in a professional capacity. And when I say professional capacity, I mean, you're supposed to be paid for it, even though we weren't, but <laughs> nevertheless, um, that's that, that's what Ivan did for me. If he hadn't given me that job as coffee boy in 1970, I don't even know if I would have ended up in the uh, in this business. Wow. But I that's owe a amazing. lot to Ivan. You know, it, it it still has a cult following. I don't think everybody realizes that you were in that uh, great uh, 73 classic. But, you know, it's also rumored that Animal House was inspired by those days at McMaster. Do you see yourself in that film? Um, I, um, well, here's, I was there when, when Animal House really was spawned in <laughs> Ivan's mind because National Lampoon... Uh, the touring company came to Toronto, I believe, in maybe 73 or 74. Um, the touring company came to El Macombo, and I went to see the show with Ivan, and we went to see it because we knew everybody in it. We knew Gilda Radner, we knew Joe Flaherty, Harold Ramis, uh, John Belushi. So it was a really funny show. We went backstage. We got to say our hellos. That was terrific. And then we left thinking, what a great, funny night. Two days later, 
I hear Ivan has already worked out a deal with Maddie Simmons, who owned and was the publisher of National Lampoon, to take this show that we loved and move it to a permanent home in New York City, which they did. And that was the creative spawning ground for Animal House, it turned out. Incredible. Turned out to be Incredible. Incredible. Yeah. So what was he like back then, like the leader of the band? He was the leader of the band. Ivan was was extremely smart, um, very kind of uh, aggressive in terms of what he knew was right and what he knew was wrong. Um, he was a born producer, uh, a good businessman, and he was... He was a very creative. Uh, he was a very creative person. He took over the the film club at McMaster, which was called the McMaster Film Board, and he turned it, you know, from what was a club making um, uh, underground, you know, movies to a commercial entity, uh, a club that actually made money. In other words, for a very nominal fee, he would run all night horror film festivals at the university and we got great crowds and, um, and he was able to fund programs for budding filmmakers like me, where, you know, he would, uh, he would have a contest. You submit your idea for a movie and he would pick the ideas that he thought would make a good five minute film. And mine was one. And I got to make my first movie at McMaster with Ivan. And that was, that was kind of the, the friendship we had Ivan and Dan Goldberg, because Dan Goldberg worked with Ivan for many, many years and was a, uh, uh, outstanding producer in his own right. Um, and we just had the greatest time, the greatest time back then. What about, um, you know, your memories of those days in downtown Toronto? Did you know his family's car wash, which, of course, is now incredibly the home of the Toronto International Film Festival, Bell Lightbox? Yeah. What, a, mo what yeah. a full circle moment. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually uh, know. I'd met his family uh, back then. Um, uh, briefly, I didn't really know that much about the family background in terms of business, what his dad did. I, I found out later that that's what happened to that, uh, that little, uh, that little, uh, lovely acre of land <laughs> downtown Toronto and, uh, that he donated it, uh, to the, uh, uh, uh to TIFF. Mm -hmm. Uh, because of his love for movies. And, and to honor his parents, which I'm all also and always fascinated that he was able to overcome what must have been a pretty traumatic childhood, his parents, Holocaust survivors, then escaping his homeland as a little boy. And it's not exactly traditional roots of comedy. Um, is humor some kind of therapeutic tool, do you think, to cope with... Uh, heavy family history like his? Well, uh, I certainly can't compare my family history to Ivan's. I think th they went through considerably more than, mm. than you know, I did. And did he, when did I he say talk I, about I, that? Like, did he share he, those kinds of things? Never, no, he never, dwell, he never dwelled on it. I remember hearing the story about how they had to get out of Czechoslovakia and, uh, um, and escape the country. I know that he had a great deal, a great deal of respect mm. for, his, uh, for his mom and dad. Uh, I know he respected uh, 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 his dad for what, you know, what he was able to do, how he was able to pick up the pieces and come to Toronto and, you know, uh, you know, start, uh, uh, start his, uh, business. Um, I only met his family a couple of times, um, because when we started working on that first film, when I was coffee boy, <laughs> the actual production office was right next door to where he lived on Avenue road. Um, I mean that again, there's Ivan. <laughs> This place, you know, comes up for lease. You know, he grabs it. Brilliant. And turns that into his uh, production facility. 
Um, uh, yeah, it was, he was, he was an amazing, he was an amazing, uh, amazing man. And it was, I loved watching how his career, uh, just, uh, catapulted from, uh, being a good filmmaker to almost, you know, running Hollywood. Wow. Your lives, though, followed such a similar spectacular path. I mean, did you ever talk about how your kids also followed in your footsteps? Jason Reitman, of course, also a great director. Your kids, Dan and Sarah. Was that a source of, of surprise or expectation for both of you, if it was something you ever discussed? Well, you know, it's funny because uh, when I was, when we were doing Schitt's Creek, um, when I was kind of in the editing room, Ivan was at the same facility kind of overseeing uh, his daughter's show, Working Moms, and I would run into him there, and we kind of talked about how, can you believe that we're here working on our kids' shows? I mean, you know, I said, I said Ivan, it's hard, it's hard to believe. Wow. It really is. It's it's incredible, and and yet we're both sharing that experience. It's pretty insane. Did Did he ever get a chance to see your brilliant Super Bowl ad, which was genius? Uh, you know, it was kind of like you mentioned Schitt's Creek. It was kind of like a little Schitt's Creek mini reunion. Uh, it was. Uh, it was definitely a fun. It was a fun you know ad to do. Uh, I, I never, I never talked to Ivan. It, it probably was maybe a year, a year and a half since I had talked to Ivan. Mm. Uh, we used to get together for dinners. We, uh, you know, I, I would see him, you know, off and on in Los Angeles. And every time we got together, I always got the sense that I was a touchstone mm to the early years, right? There was an instant kind of history when we got together. Mm -hmm. And he almost, I mean, he was exactly the same Ivan that I knew at McMaster every time I ran into him. There was always that sense of fun that, you know, remember remember those days. You know, I could I could see it in his eyes. Um, but quite, a, quite an amazing man and he did about as good as anybody can do in this business. He was um, he was destined for the top, and he made it there. He sure did. And Eugene Levy, we thank you, sir. And again, our condolences at the loss of your friend and our gratitude for your commitment to keeping us laughing. Thank you, Lisa.